I'm cold and dark I am the hungry shark Fast and merciless But the only girl who could talk to him just... Hey guys, SBS Dominant here. I'm going to do a video that I've been wanting to do for a long time now, way before I started YouTube the whole month of, a whole month ago. But uh, I figured this would probably have been my very first video. It's placement of your reef tank. And we just see a, a spot in the living room and this, that's where I want to keep it. Well, first off, I'm going to say it's, it's more complex than that. Uh, you need to have uh, a house or, some, uh, or a building that is well ventilated and climate controlled. You don't want your reef tank near gas heaters or really in the same room as a gas heater or a, a fireplace because this will drive down your pH in the tank. Uh, just within an hour, it can lower it from 8.3 to 7.7. .7. Uh, I've seen it. Power outlets, you need plenty of power outlets. Uh, I would recommend 20 amp. Um, I would check the gauge of your wire and, and check with your uh, homeowner guide. Uh, you can check it on Google, what gauge wire will go with what size uh, amp breaker. If you have 15s, I recommend bumping that up to 20 if the gauge wire can handle it. Uh, water supply, do you have water supply close by so maybe that you can run your rod uh, lines directly to your auto top off or you have it permanently plumbed to your auto top off tank with a uh, float valve where you can just cut it on shoot out your wastewater turn it back over and fill your auto top off and then once the float hits it'll cut itself off access to the outside this one's near a window um, I got the shade pool real good and the back of the tank's painted black so I don't have to worry about uh, sunlight coming through and causing other problems which I've seen great tanks that sit in sunrooms and do very well um, but you want to be able to get to the outside so in case you want to plumb the air line from your skimmer or run a bubbler or uh, many other things that you can run from the outside maybe even your water uh, from the outside um, Maybe you want to be able to uh, do water changes. You can uh, run a, uh, a hose from your tank to the outside. Here, just use all the chairs. I stick the water hose right there when I drain. Uh, I use just a, a little cobalt pump to uh, drain my tank. I got a mark on the back of my tank uh, to know when I get to uh, 40 gallons and that's where I know where to stop. And then I have my 40 gallon uh, Rubbermaid tub, usually I keep it about right here, and I fill, fill the tank back up. Moisture uh, is a big problem with especially larger reefs. This is a 150, and this is a metal building here in our office at a Golden Pond RV Park uh, that I own and operate. This is our display tank in the office, and uh, it creates a lot of moisture, so I run a dehumidifier in this room. I don't know if you can actually hear it running in the background or not. And I pull three gallons of water out of this building every day. Uh, I, cut, I dump it in the morning, and when I come back uh, the next morning, it's full. And I have to dump the water, and it cuts back on. I got it off of eBay for about $150. Uh, it was a floor model, and it it says five gallons, but it's, it's about a three-point... 3.5 gallon pitcher that's underneath. I highly recommend one of those. The lights in the room, uh, whether if you are going to run your lights during the day when the lights are off in the tank, do you still have lights in that room? Uh, disturbing your fish, it stresses the fish out uh, that you're in the room making noise and uh, you turn lights on from you know the ceiling and it's shining on the tank, waking the fish up, disturbing the fish. Uh, it'd be kind of like the same way you're trying to uh, trying to sleep at night and somebody keeps turning the light on in your room. Uh, the size of your tank, I mentioned in the last video, uh, if you plan on putting a, a 100 plus gallon tank upstairs, do you have the joists running the correct way? And 
uh, are you up on top of a load bearing wall? Uh, you need to know these things. Uh, is there enough support there? Is it 2x6, 2x8, 2x10, 2x12? Are they doubled up? You know, you need to know these things. Um, and then with your size of your tank, then you'll know what size lights. You can get a 60 gallon, four foot long tank and you need a four foot long uh, uh, light fixture like I have here, but this is a 150 right here. So you could buy a 60 gallon tank and spend just as much on the lights as you would on a 150. Um, I think Mile High Reefer, he has a 210 gallon tank and he has, it's a four foot reef, I believe. It may be a little longer, I'm not sure. Uh, what size skimmer uh, you're going to need uh, for your tank? I know that hasn't to do with uh, uh, placement, uh, so does the light, but uh, uh, I see a lot of people running. Uh, they got a 100 gallon tank and they got a skimmer for a 400 gallon tank, so the skimmer is nice, uh, is running good for 12 hours and then four or five hours it shuts, it shuts down, it loses its foam cap. Uh, I would decrease or raise your feeding. Sorry about that guys, business calls. Well, uh, I added Wi-Fi to that. Uh, most of your lights and things, those Hydra uh, 52s, they require Wi-Fi. I run a uh, Apex controller on this uh, tank. So having Wi-Fi is a big deal now with keeping a reef. So placement of that, so if you, you place your uh, your reef tank down in the basement where you may not get Wi-Fi or good ventilation for that matter uh, it may not be your best choice uh, you need good ventilation and of course you need some Wi-Fi for about everything nowadays um, I know I changed my lights uh, here and there uh, I start if I ever start getting any cyano or uh, algae bloom or anything like that I uh, diatoms I generally turn the red down um, so that's going to be the end of my video. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and comment.